Okay, in number four, we're asked to use a graphing utility to graph the function. From the graph, we're supposed to approximate intervals over which f is increasing, the intervals over which f is decreasing, and find the local maximums and minimums, if they exist, and approximate the range of f. So we're going to type this function into our calculator. And here's our calculator. And as I uh, press keys, they'll show up here. So that's the key history. So when you, when you first uh, have your calculator and turn it on, you'll go to what's called the home screen. And the screen we want to get to is the y equals screen. So if we press y equals, it's now asking us to enter the function. And the function we have is a fraction. And so I always enter the numerator and denominator grouped in parentheses, just to make sure the calculator knows what's supposed to be where. So the numerator was 10x, so I'll start with a left parenthesis, 10x, and a right parenthesis. And I'll divide that by left parenthesis, x squared, plus 1. Once again, closing off the parentheses. Now to get a picture of this, I'm going to first plot it on the standard window, where x and y both range between negative 10 and 10. So to quickly get to that, I'm going to hit the zoom key, and I'm going to scroll down and pick number 6. And there's the picture. This is called a serpentine curve, because it looks like a snake. So what do we notice about this curve? Well, we've got our x-intercept and y-intercept right there at the origin. It certainly appears to have origin symmetry. If I reflect this across the y-axis and then over the x-axis, these two parts are going to match up perfectly. You notice as I plug in these negative values for x and as I plug in these positive values for x, the graph appears to be getting closer and closer to the x-axis. And you may ask if it ever crosses the x-axis again, and the answer is no. And how do we know that? We know that because the only x-intercept is the origin 0, 0. So this kind of behavior we're going to talk about in Chapter 4, it's called asymptotic behavior. So we'll talk about that later. Okay, so if I imagine moving from left to right on this graph, the y-values are decreasing up to this point, then they increase, and then they decrease again. So I do have a local minimum at this point, and I do have a local maximum at that point. So we're going to use the calculator to help us find what those values are. So we're going to go to the Calculate menu, and the way we get to the Calculate menu is we're going to press the second button and then Trace. We're going to scroll down because we want to calculate a minimum value and press enter. And the calculator is asking us to bound the minimum, meaning we want to find a point on the graph that's a little bit left of the minimum. So we're going to use the left arrow key to move the cursor on the graph to some place a little to the left. So that looks about right, and I'll hit enter. Now we're asked to move the cursor to a right bound, which means I want to move it past the minimum to some point to the right of the minimum. That looks about right. Now hit enter. And then it's asking us for a guess. And once again, these are all approximations. The calculator does a thing, and it turns out x is negative 0.99999, y is negative 5, and so I think we're all comfortable rounding that to negative 1, negative 5. So I'm going to record that. So we've got a local min at negative 1, negative 5. Now we know that the function is odd. So if negative 1, negative 5 is on the graph, what other point has to be on the graph? Well, you take the opposite of both of these things, and that's going to give you 1, 5. And that's going to be our local max. We can always double check, of course. 
we can go to second calc or second trace rather to the calculate menu and go down to maximum it wants a left bound for that so I'll point to the left of the maximum hit enter and then we'll have a point to the right of this maximum and hit enter and then asking for a guess hit enter and here we get 0.9999899 y equals 5 which if you round it is going to be the 0.1 comma 5 as far as intervals of increase and decrease as I move from left to right where am I increasing well, I'm decreasing up to here and then between here and here I'm increasing. The x-coordinate was negative 1 here and the x-coordinate here is 1 so I'm increasing on the interval negative 1 to 1. Where am I decreasing? Well, I'm decreasing everywhere else. I'm decreasing up to negative 1 and I'm decreasing from 1 on. And once again, when we list the intervals of increase and decrease, we're listing the x values only. The last thing we're asked to do is approximate the range. Remember, the range are the y values that we get out from this function. So if I look at the y values, I've got the local minimum has a y value of negative 5. And the local maximum has a y value of 5. And from the graph it appears that all the y values are going to be between the negative 5 and 5. So if I imagine pushing this graph to the y-axis, I'm going to get everything from negative 5 to 0 up to 5. And so that's going to be our range. So that'll do it for checkpoint, or that'll do it for checkpoint 1.7.